Welcome to this week's episode of Maroon TV News. I'm Liz Stark. And I'm Mike Pasolio. And here are today's top stories. A U Chicago shuttle was evacuated last Thursday night after the front of the bus caught on fire. The fire lasted about 10 minutes, but thankfully, no one was hurt. The 67th annual Latka Hamantash debate will be held on Tuesday, November 26th from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Mandel Hall. University professors will use knowledge of their own disciplines to determine whether the Latka or Hamantash is superior in what is sure to be an entertaining and lively debate. The event is sponsored by Alpha Epsilon Phi, and tickets for the Latka and Hamantash tasting afterwards are $5 per person. On Wednesday, Students for Health Equity continued their ongoing campaign to bring an adult trauma center to the University of Chicago Hospital with a dramatic mock funeral march. Our Louis Simpson has the report. How can a human right? Healthcare is a human right. We won't go without a fight. We won't go without a A group known as Fearless Leading by the Youth organized the protest and coffin march in which they symbolically carried two coffins and wore black as a symbol of those who have lost their lives due to the lack of a trauma center. Many are upset over the lack of a trauma center in Hyde Park, claiming the nearest trauma center is over a half an hour away. The University of Chicago Medical Center only treats trauma victims up to age 16. Proponents of the trauma center say that a new trauma center should take priority over other expenditures, such as University of Chicago's recent opening of the new Center for Care and Discovery, which cost roughly $700 million. Students from the University of Chicago joined locals from Hyde Park at the protest. They haven't promised to do it. So far they've completely said that we will refuse to, we are refusing to open one, we don't have the funds, that it's not feasible at this time, so on and so forth. I'm trying to make this an issue again. This is Louise Simpson, Maroon TV News. This past weekend, University Theatre staged a well-received performance of Hamlet Machine, a postmodern take on Hamlet written by the legendary German writer and dramatist Heiner Müller. Our Sarah Claypool has the report. The intersection of postmodernism, Shakespeare, and Soviet-era Germany is, by necessity, a demanding undertaking. German philosophers after World War II sort of saw Germany as a state being symbolized by the character of Hamlet. Right, as Germany being this big beast that's kind of slow to act, sort of slow to act, but thinks a lot, and then when it finally acts, it acts in a horrendous way. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, University Theater made good use of this intersection with their production of Heiner Mueller's Hamlet Machine, a 1977 play loosely based on Hamlet. Actor Kyle Yeh describes the action. Feel is a very inappropriate term for a postmodernist play like Hamlet Machine. I think it's weird and I think the purpose of a postmodernist play is that you don't know what to feel and that's how it's supposed to be. Due to the nature of the script, most actors had multiple roles. I play Polonius slash Hamlet. So I play the role of Polonius, but I'm sort of sharing the role of Hamlet with a few other people in the cast. The play featured an interactive set and a band, and action took place on both floors of the performing space. Tenth week, UT will perform Grey Gardens. Sarah Claypool, Maroon TV News. The U Chicago chapter of the Chicago Alliance Against Sexual Exploitation hosted a talk this week with two members of the Dreamcatcher Foundation, Brenda Myers Powell and Homer King. The Dreamcatcher Foundation reaches out to young women trapped as sex workers to provide mentorship and resources to get out. Both King, a former pimp, and Myers Powell, a former prostitute and current executive director of the foundation, talked about their experiences in the world of human trafficking and discussed Dreamcatcher's mission. Puppies came to play on Wednesday at the UChicago Health and Wellness sponsored event, Pet Love, in McCormick Lounge. Certified therapy dogs were brought in to give students the opportunity to relieve their stress and socialize. UChicago Health and Wellness explained that interacting with pets helps release endorphins and reduce stress levels. Pet Love was the perfect event for both two-legged and four-legged friends. The lights were off on Saturday night at Henry Crown Fieldhouse for a game of laser tag hosted by Globe Med. Ryan McNamara has the report. Last Friday night, UChicago students were given a license to kill at the Globe Med Fall Laser Tag Tournament in Henry Crown Fieldhouse. So Globe Med at the University of Chicago is one of 55 chapters nationwide of a national nonprofit that partners student groups with um, grassroots organizations abroad. The tournament was the first in a series of fundraisers planned by the UChicago chapter of the Global Health Advocacy Group 
to meet their annual goal of raising $10,000 for tuberculosis treatment in Peru. So, uh, yeah, what are y'all doing here? Uh, we are Dragon Army, and so we're, well, firmly we're in clutch for the 10th, but now we are definitely uh, we're ready to dominate back to surgery. And we're fighting for those we lost, those two. Yeah. While people of all skills were welcome to join the fight, one team, Dragon Army, took the battle to a whole new level. How have y'all practiced? Uh, we have done formations with the plans. Um, we've gone over hand signals. Do you have any secret formation, secret plans that uh, you think will win the competition? Definitely. We've got a couple of tricks on our side. Because of the large number of RSOs who host fundraisers on campus each year, Globe Med put the fun in fundraiser with this 007 theme tournament. Students galore had all of Henry Crown as their battlefield as they fought to die another day. Laser tag doesn't have like anything directly to do with laser tag, uh, with with Club Med and like global health, but it's a way to get students involved into race funds. This laser tag session is one of many events hosted by Globe Med throughout the school year. For more news on upcoming events, check out their Facebook page at Globe Med at U Chicago. From Maroon TV News, this is Ryan McNamara. On Thursday, November 21st, political journalist Mark Halperin and John Heilman came to the University of Chicago to talk about national politics and their new book, Double Down. Here is Sean Graff with the report. Some might question how the excitement of the 2008 presidential election could ever be topped. In their new book, Double Down, John Heilman and Mark Halperin prove that the 2012 presidential election behind the scenes was filled with just as much excitement and thrill. Speaking with the Institute of Politics, Steve Edwards, students and Hyde Park community members were treated to some of the best stories inside Double Down and the 2012 campaign, including the vetting of New Jersey Governor Chris Christie for vice president by the Mitt Romney campaign. Governor Christie didn't really want to be on the ticket, but he didn't want to not be asked. And so that ambivalence led to a series of kind of unusual back, back and forth between Trenton, as we call it in the book sometimes, in Boston, where Governor Christie was asked as having submitted, agreed to be submitted, agreed to submit to be having his background checked to perhaps be put on the ticket, then does not turn over all the documents that are requested. And Governor Romney and his team were quite frustrated at that because they wanted to consider him. And how Clint Eastwood's infamous RNC convention speech came to happen. And everyone's saying how great Mitt Romney is. And Eastwood thinks, well, I don't want to be like everybody else. Everybody already knows I like Mitt Romney. I wouldn't be here if I didn't like Mitt Romney. I want to do something different. And at that point, the combination of a desire to be different and the inspiration of Neil Diamond calls, gets him to ask somebody for a chair literally three minutes before he walks out on stage. Again, still no, with no real idea what he was going to say. They bring the chair out. They put it out there. He goes out and does his thing. Now, what's going on in Romney world is like the most abject panic you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> Halpern and Heilman also spoke about President Obama grappling with his terrible first debate against Governor Romney. It is, it is a long part of the book and, and one of the pieces of reporting that we're most proud of because I think it, it's important history but also reveals a lot about the president, not just how he was grappling with the, the, the second debate itself with the pressure on him, but also about his attitude towards politics and the theatricality of politics and the, um, his feelings about Governor Romney. and, and and a rare instance, at least in our experience, of the president acknowledging that he's not sure he can do something uh, because Barack Obama's general mode is to say, I, I can do pretty much anything, and he usually does. From the Quadrangle Club, I'm Sean Graff with Maroon TV News. And now, David Liu with sports. Here's your weekly fix of Maroon Sports. Earlier this week, on Monday, the men's basketball team absolutely crushed Lake Forest 99-54. to Senior forward Charlie Hughes led the team with 12 points and 4 assists. Then on Friday, the team barely squeaked out a win, beating Whitman 81-79 at the Lapado Classic Tournament. Junior guard Royce Muskie Valley splashed in the game-winning shot, with just six seconds left to clinch the game for the Maroons. The women's basketball team had a much more difficult week. On Tuesday, they faced the number four ranked University of Wisconsin Whitewater. The Maroons evened the score early in the second half, but Whitewater went on a 16-4 run, and the Maroons just never recovered. Senior guard Julie McGuire led the way with 24 points and 11 rebounds for a double-double as the Maroons fell 90-76. to In the running news, both the men's and women's cross-country teams qualified for the national competition in Hanover. In addition, the head women's cross-country coach, Chris Hall, was named Midwest Region Coach of the Year and UAA Coach of the Year. And that's your Maroons sports wrap-up. 
Thanks for watching this week's episode of Maroon TV News. I'm Mike Vassileo. And I'm Liz Stark. Have a great week.